On the breakfast, Nigeria's federal government has officially recognized two new labor associations, a controversial move that may have implication for the ongoing strike by university lecturers. Also on the breakfast, as World Teachers Day is 2022 been marked today, we look at the state of teaching profession in Nigeria and education in general. And Tunde Kolawali will join us this morning for an in-depth analysis of today's major headlines. We call it Off the Press. Well, it's a beautiful morning right here. Thank you for joining us. I am a messy popo. As always, we set off our conversation with a top trending. And first on the list is that Julius Berger tests streetlights on Niger Bridge ahead of the launch. And, and that has uh, caused a lot of uh, reaction, responses, argument, and debate, especially on the micro-blogging platform called Twitter. <laughs> However, so I, I think that, you know, first of all, it's, it's really, how do we express the feeling that what should be, usually when we have projects and all of that, I mean, it's expected. And then we begin to make, you know, bosses like you belong to a family and then every other day that you're fed or your father gives you food, then we begin to, you know, make it a big issue that, oh, today I've eaten. It feels like it's natural. These things come to you by virtue of being part of family. But yesterday on Twitter, I mean, if you look at the trend this morning, there's hashtag Julius Berger uh, that follows, you know, the fact that a light has been put on, a switched on, street light, uh, ahead of the launch. Apparently, it's been stated that this bridge will be ready in December. Maybe, just maybe. Uh, we're looking at 2023, but we will also have some reports saying it will be 2020, 2024. But fingers are actually crossed. And the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, uh, said that the final stage of construction is where the bridge is at. It will be inaugurated in December 2022 and open to vehicular movement. And so, so there are several reports. But fingers are crossed because a lot of persons are anticipating, uh, you know, the opening of the second Niger Bridge, which is a federal government project that's been managed by the Federal Ministry of Works, housing in collaboration with the Nigerian Foreign Investment Authorities. Construction on the bridge had commenced in September the 1st, uh, 2018. This also... This also is one issue, is a point, is a talking point for a lot of persons, especially at this point where there's a lot of politicking going on. And so you have people who are saying, hey, you see, this administration has come on and the issue of, uh, you know, the bridge has been completed. We had a government that for 16 years, that's the PDP, who could not complete all of this. But we seem to forget, we seem to forget, we seem to be in a hurry to forget that government is a continuum. Yes, we understand that all of this was initiated by, you know, the administration of Olusegun Obasanjo, former president at the time. He was kicked off, you know, a few months. The project actually was kicked off, but without any actual action. And then got to, was handed over to uh, Yaradua, took over from it, late Yaradua. And uh, nothing really actually happened. However, it was still in the process. Uh, the process was still uh, being taken into consideration. And then Jonathan Jonathan took over uh, with saying, hey, we're going to complete the bridge and what have you. Now you have the president, Mohammed Buhari's administration, and uh, the project is expected to be completed because it's not completed yet. That was like a test run. Uh, they needed to see what's going on, how it would look like at the end of the day. But we're hoping that, you know, this project is actually completed. But it just also feels we need to understand that government is a continuum. as one of the characteristics of government. Uh, it's important that if a project is started, there should be completion. And so, well, as much as we say uh, that it's commendable, we also need to give credit to all of the people that had initiated the process and all of that. And there should be, you know, no big issue with the fact that, hey, a certain government has completed the project. At the end of the day, it's for the good of uh, everybody, so for the good of Nigerians, and that's what it should be. Right. 
And now there is that uh, there was a peaceful protest against the EFCC, and I saw the video yesterday where you have youths in worry protesting against the EFCC. I, I really don't know if we'll have that video to put out there, and uh, you, you could probably hear uh, the citizens or those people who are protesting, the protesters saying, oh, no, speaking in pigeon, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Do we have audio to this video? We did the grand. Where you? When I come outside, I don't understand. Yes, it's for you. Hey, I'm mad. Where you? We did the grand. Where you? When I come outside, I don't understand. Yes, it's for you. Hey, I'm mad. Where you? We did the grand. Where you? When I come outside, I don't understand. Yes. Well, so, I mean, that's part of it. There, there were, you also could see another video. I mean, a lot of them made it to uh, Instagram, Instablog, and what have you. And, I mean, part of uh, the social media, different blogs and different social media spaces where you hear the people talking about EFCC and saying, hey, these guys are our boyfriends. This is how we survive. It's a means of survival for us and livelihood. You can't do this. But some people are also of the opinion that if you're talking about the fight against uh, financial crime and corruption, then the EFCC should be focused on uh, a certain group of persons, the politicians, those who are engaged in fraudulent activities, uh, diverting funds and what have you, the corruption that's going on in the system, rather than uh, focusing on the young people who are also engaging in crime, fraudulent at the end of the day. But it, it just, uh, at the end of the day, it goes to show as a pointer that the values, our value as, as a country is depreciating every other time. I really don't understand what's the rationale behind the protests where you have young people trunking out to the streets. And that's a crime. When these persons who are engaged in, you know, uh, taking money from people in a fraudulent way, disguising, uh, playing all of these shenanigans and all of the tricks that you have to take money, steal from people. It is really, really wrong. And, uh, but, well, it feels like everyone is at the pursuit of survival. What can we do to survive? I think that there are other means and ways to survive rather than engaging in theft and, you know, all that it is. With all of the justifications that we have, it's not enough. We can't, I mean, there's no way to, uh, you know, justify crime. So when you take something that does not belong to you, you actually put the other person in a very, uh, on comfortable situation or position and that's really wrong and so for those people who are engaged in the uh, wire wire that's what it's been called you, you take money the justification has been that oh we, we, we need to take away from for what was done to Africa and Nigeria uh, this is more like a payback but this is totally wrong and not acceptable and it's it's just a reflection of the kind of society that we have we can continue to you know leave like this and expect, you know, different results. There's a lot of work that needs to be done from the family, you know, to uh, the community at large and even to the government. Uh, we feels like we're definitely losing it at every strata. The protests, I'm asking, what's the end essence of this protest? What is it supposed to achieve? That, you know, the EFCC should be scrapped or they should stop uh, going... Uh, or chasing those who are involved in this uh, financial or, I mean, fraudulent act where they scam people, steal identities, take monies for projects and what have you, really? Well, that's it on that. We'll move away quickly because uh, the governor of Lagos State, Song Wu Liu, has approved salary increase for uh, Lagos State workers. We quickly take this track and when we return, we'll talk more. Stay with us. I don't know what and I know that as a country, there is pressure. I know that as a country, there is high level of inflation. I know that as a country... Office, I made sure I start training and pension to start work 
on how we're going to increase the entire salary. Well, uh, that's the Lagos State Governor, Sean Wolu, who has actually announced the increase uh, of uh, salary across levels of workers and public service. And the decision, according to him, was to cushion the effect of inflation and uh, high prices of commodity and the increasing cost of living being experienced across the globe on the workforce. But you know how it can be. <laughs> a little bit of that. So the timing has been questioned. And we understand that, hey, the campaigns have started already ahead of 2023. And of course, there's a need for a second term. Some people have perceived this as, you know, another election tactic, as a strategy. And that's what it is. Uh, as much as this is very commendable, if it's implemented, then it would go a long way. I mean, that's, that's a lot. And that's why you could see the crowd cheering and, you know, looking very happy that, you know, salaries would be increased to meet the current realities. But how much of it? Uh, over time, I know that the argument has always been about the increase of salary. But we are thinking that if there might just be, you know, a shift of focus from increase of salary uh, every other time, then, you know, to other issues, for instance, how about housing, how about transportation, how about, you know, healthcare and what have you. This also would, you know, go a long way. But uh, the comments that you would see online and especially on Twitter, I said, hey, it's a political season and this is also one of the gimmicks, you know, for the elections. And that's why you're increasing it. Uh, but let's even see if it will be implemented. So there's a lot of talk. Why at this particular time? Mm, uh, you know, he might just, you know, give a lot of thoughts and all of that. But will that also influence the decision of the people of who becomes the next governor of the state? Or uh, on the other hand, would that also, because we understand that uh, this is the APC uh, administration right here, and you also have the fact that at the national level, there's concern uh, for the APC of buying to become uh, clinging to that, you know, ticket of uh, saying, hey, we're going to produce the next president. So all of this is the discussion and the conversation that you have online. But very commendable is the fact that uh, the Lagos State government or Lagos State itself is part of uh, one of the states that has implemented, you know, the 30,000 naira or the minimum wage, the increase at the end of the day. I mean, let's not forget that a lot of states across the Federation that are still struggling with the implementation of the minimum wage, as it were. But Lagos State has fully implemented uh, that minimum wage. And let's look at what happens, you know, with the increase. As much as, you know, a lot of people feel like, mm, you know, uh, there might just be a trick around there. Is it a good thing? Very commendable. But we hope that it's implemented uh, for the good of the people. However, uh, a lot of persons are also still thinking that this should not just be, you know, one thing that will... Um, by the people over to the other side of the divide. But that's the much we can take this morning on our top trending. We take a break and when we return, it will be time for us to look through the front pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Stay with us.